Australia's regional arrangements for intercepting boat refugees. The Pacific Solution, Tempa Case and Australian Policy on Boat Refugees in 2001, especially after the Tampa Affair, the number of boat arrivals increased in Australia. As a consequence, the Howard government announced the Pacific Solution. The Pacific Solution Policy was also known as the Pacific Plan or Pacific Strategy. It is the Tampa affair that gave birth to the infamous Pacific Solution. Before examining the Pacific Solution policy, we will provide some details concerning the Tampa affair. It is an important academic subject regarding both refugees because it exemplif exemplifies the treatment given by the Australian government to both refugees in distress at sea, where Australia made a great effort to decline the rights to entry of the boat refugees into its territory. The Tampa incident reveals how the Australian government refused the boat refugees despite its humanitarian commitments under international law including refugee law and international maritime law. The Tampa incident brought together international law, human rights, executive powers, and court decisions. The facts of the case are as follows. On 22 August 2001, the MV Tampa, a Norwegian flagged container ship, was on a voyage from Western Australia to Singapore via the Indian Ocean under the command of Captain Arne Rinnan. The ship was permitted to carry 50 persons. When the ship was traveling between Christmas Island and Indonesia, it received a distress call from the Australian Canberra Rescue and Coordination Center that reported that a vessel with around 80 passengers on board was sinking and issued a request to render assistance to the distress vessel. In response, the MV Tampa changed its direction and traveled to rescue the boat. On Sunday, 26 August 2001, the master found a 20-meter wooden, overloaded and unseaworthy Indonesian fishing boat, the Palapa, with 433 boat people on board, including 26 females, three of whom were pregnant and 43 children. Most of the passengers were Afghan asylum seekers, and when the boat was located, they were around 158 miles from Indonesia and 85 miles from Australia's Christmas Island. The distressed people person were loaded aboard the Tamba. However, the actual location of the rescue area was within the Indonesian search and rescue zone. The ship's master asked the Australian Coast Guard where to sail with the boat refugees, but didn't receive any clear answer. Rather, he received a don't know from the Coast Guard. As a result, the Tampa's captain, Arna Rinan, decided to navigate to Merak, the closest port of Indonesia which had facilities to dock the large vessel. Some of the rescued persons threatened to commit suicide if they were reverted to Indonesia. Others moved onto the ship's brides and demanded to sail to Christmas Island. The captain notified the Australian Coordination Center of the situation and changed to the Australian territory, Christmas Island, under the risk. When the Tampa was close to the destination, the Australian authorities refused to allow the ship into the port and ordered it to stop outside Australian territorial waters, 12 nautical miles off the coast of Christmas Island, and later directed the captain to travel to Merak, Indonesia, with the asylum seekers. The captain was threatened that if he didn't know he didn't follow the instruction, he could be charged with a criminal offence. On 27 August, the Australian government closed the port of Christmas Island to prevent disembarkation from the boat. 
However, the captain of the Tampa notified the Australian authorities about a shortage of food and water and sick person on board. He repeated the request for food and medical assistance to the Australian authorities. The requests were acknowledged, but there was no reply. In the meantime, some of the asylum seekers became very sick and unconscious. The rescued boat people informed the shipmaster that they would start jumping overboard if no medical assistance was being provided. The shipmaster noticed that the situation was getting out of hand. So, with no other alternative, on 29 August, the captain sent a distress message and sailed into Australian territorial waters, stopping around 4 nautical four nautical miles from Christmas Island, Flying Fish Cove. Immediately thereafter, within two hours, Australian Special Armed Services Troops Australian Defence Force took control over the ship and informed the shipmaster that he breached the Australian law because the passengers of the ship had no valid visa to enter Australian territory. After the primary investigation, it was decided that none of the passengers needed emergency medical assistance and the ship was ordered to leave Australian waters with the asylum seekers. Thereafter, the Norway and Australian governments were involved in an argument about the Tampa affair. Norway claimed that the ship was unfit for international voyage and the Australian action towards the asylum seekers were inhuman and violated international law. In response, the Australian Prime Minister said that the Norwegian authorities were responsible for retrieving the boat refugees as the ship was registered in Norway, the shipmaster was from Norway, and the owner of the ship was a Norwegian company. On the evening of 29 August, the Australian government took further action to refuse the asylum seekers. Very swiftly, Prime Minister Howard introduced the Border Protection Bill 2001 into Parliament. The bill empowered the government to remove any foreign ship in Australia territorial waters with retrospective authority and immediate effect. The bill was especially targeted to removing the Tampa, but on 30 August the bill was criticized and rejected by the Senate. On the same day, the Norwegian ambassador went to see the rescued person and they collectively applied for asylum status in Australia. In fact, the Tampa incident involved some complex issues of both international law and Australian domestic law. International maritime law provides the obligation to rescue at sea and Clause 3, Article 98.1, Solus Convention, Chapter 5, Regulation 33.1, and states are under an obligation to protect refugees under the non refoulement Principle, Article 33.1 of Refugee Convention. Under the modern law of the sea, a coastal state has authority to refuse, refuse entry of a vessel if it carries illegal immigrants or violates domestic law. Furthermore, a state has the right to expel or return refugees, refoulers, and in particular a mass of influx person on the ground of national security. Article 33.2 of the 1951 Refugee Convention Whether the 433 asylum seekers of the Tampa would be considered a mass flux or large scale of influx isn't clear under international law. Moreover, under Australian constitutional law, the executive enjoys vast power and can deny unauthorized refugee both access to its port. The question of domestic imposes an obligation on a shipmaster to rescue distressed person at sea. There is no obligation of a coastal state to accept the asylum seekers. 
In the Tampa situation, Australia took advantage of those gaps in Australian international law. It argued that Norway was responsible to protect the boat refugees as the flag state of the Tampa, and Indonesia was responsible for disembarkation of the rescued person as the nearest feasible port. Thank you.